Hi there, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for watching TCM, where music is in the air tonight. We've got a double feature of movies that celebrate a uniquely American art form, jazz. We begin tonight with a fictional story inspired by the life of a real-life early jazz virtuoso known for his inventive solos on the cornet, Vix Beiderbecke. From Warner Brothers in 1950, directed by Michael Curtiz, Kirk Douglas leads the cast of Young Man with a Horn. Here's the setup. An orphan, Rick Martin, is sent to live with his older and indifferent sister. He's friendless. He's a loner. One night, he manages to peek through the window of a hopping jazz joint nearby, and he's totally taken in by what he sees, what he hears. He's then befriended by a musician played by Juano Hernandez, with whom he eventually forms a meaningful connection, which leads to Rick getting a hold of his first trumpet. Kirk Douglas enters the picture playing Rick as an adult. He gets caught up with a pair of very different women played by two very different actresses. There's a nightclub singer played by Doris Day and a spoiled socialite. That's Lauren Bacall. Rick also has a good pal, the colorfully named Smoke Willoughby, played by a real-life musician, Hoagie Carmichael, who four years earlier proved himself a pretty adept actor as the piano-playing bar owner in the best years of our lives. Carmichael, a sensational, mostly self-taught piano player, composed many standards of the Great American Songbook, including Georgia On My Mind and Stardust. Carmichael had known Bix Beiderbecke and considered him to be nothing less than the greatest jazz musician of all time, so Carmichael's presence in this film added a touch of authenticity to the story. Young Man with a Horn is based on a 1938 novel inspired by Beiderbecke's life by Dorothy Baker. Warner Brothers locked up the movie rights but struggled to find a suitable leading man, so the project languished in development. John Garfield had been mentioned for the role. Ronald Reagan was also briefly considered, as was Jimmy Stewart, who'd soon play another real-life jazz great in the Glenn Miller story from 1954. Kirk Douglas, fresh off his Oscar-nominated turn as a boxer and champion, wound up as the lead, and he took his preparation seriously. He wanted to look like a real trumpet player. We'll have those details after the film. From Warner Brothers in 1950, Young Man with a Horn. Kirk Douglas could do many things in front of the camera and when the cameras weren't rolling. But playing the trumpet was not one of them. For his role in Young Man with a Horn, Douglas spent three months studying so he could reasonably fake it on screen. He practiced constantly in his dressing room. That forced his director, Michael Curtiz, to ask Douglas, no doubt very politely, to please stop. Douglas's parts on the soundtrack were dubbed by well-known trumpet player and band leader Harry James. James emerged shortly after Bix Beiderbecke, the influential cornet player who inspired Young Man with a Horn. Unlike Beiderbecke, who died at 28 due to the ravages of alcoholism, James enjoyed a long and successful career. In 1939, Harry James gave a young punk from Hoboken, New Jersey, his big break, hiring him as the singer for the Harry James Orchestra. That singer from Hoboken, Sheldon Ezra Goldfarb. It was Frank Sinatra. Coming up, the back half of tonight's jazz double feature. The title we have next is just the name of the city you most associate with jazz. Phoenix. I got you again, didn't I? New Orleans from 1947 is next on TCM. Next on TCM, New Orleans, then The Circle, and later, All My Good Countrymen. United We Stand on TCM Tonight.